the right can no longer afford to play footsie in future judicial picks. And by footsie, I mean pushing through three Trump justice picks in three years, one of which was held up for a year to stop Obama from succeeding in pushing through Merrick Garland, and the other confirmed mere weeks before the election, one who happened to not know the rights guaranteed by the First Amendment. But that's neither here nor there. We cannot have picks like Justice Roberts. We cannot have picks like Brett Kavanaugh. We cannot have picks who are ciphers, okay? You cannot have picks who we don't know which way they're going. You have to have people who have gone through the wars, who have gone through the battles. And by battles and wars, of course, I mean allegorically, okay? Metaphorically, okay? I'm speaking in a figurative, symbolic depiction of the phraseology of battles here. Now I know the left will take my words, spin into something unrecognizable to try to portray myself and my words, some kind of self-grandiosity of importance. And to that, I say the left doesn't work in reality and context. And that's just the way that goes. And if you have to pass them through with 51 votes, you pass them through with 50 plus one. That's what Democrats are going to do right here. The real reason Justice Breyer is stepping down, of course, is because Democrats are about to get their asses kicked in come November 2022. Just like Justice Scalia died and then Merrick Garland was nominated by Barack Obama, but Mitch McConnell held up the seat. The Democrats are worried the same thing could happen here, so that's why Stephen Breyer is stepping down. What people should realize, of course, is the real reason Justice Breyer is stepping down is because he isn't an idiot, which, of course, underscores how much of an idiot Ruth Bader Ginsburg was for not stepping down while Barack Obama was still president. Instead, she decided to wait until she died, conveniently, in 2020, mere months before the election. Now, that's notwithstanding the fact that had she, in fact, stepped down during Obama's presidency, rather than choosing to die mere weeks before the presidential election, it would very likely have made no difference, as Mitch McConnell would have simply held up that vote. Let's not forget, okay? Mitch McConnell is a man who says, hey, Barack, you've still got a year in office? Well, guess what? We're considering your authority heretofore null and void, and we believe the American people ought to have a say in who decides the next Supreme Court pick. But when the proverbial shoe is on the metaphorical other foot, Mitch said, we're going to push through Barrett while Trump is still president. Never mind that it's merely weeks until the election. Because Harry Reid broke this thing a long time ago, you see. Harry Reid ended the filibuster on the Supreme Court nominee, and that is what has created the current standard, which is that any sheer majority can just pass through whoever they want. That is, of course, so long as the Senate hears your vote. You get a master of his craft, such as Mitch McConnell, and you can truly have your proverbial cake and eat it too. Now, the real point here is I, I want to underscore just how inconsistent and bereft of principality the left truly is here. The left is happy to ram through this pick now, now that Justice Breyer is conveniently and obviously deliberately being forced to retire because Joe Biden is president. So, you see, Democrats today are worried that a Senate takeover by Republicans in the coming midterm elections could block the president from filling any vacancies. Now, you will recall that Democrats made precisely the opposite point in 2020, right? In 2020, they said after Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, how dare Republicans speed through nomination? We must wait for an election. There must be an election. We have to have a new president before the Ruth Bader Ginsburg seat is filled. Mitch McConnell's like, well, we've still got time on the calendar, so we're going to go for this thing. Same thing right here. The Democrats, if you held any consistency in standard, which of course you don't, you would wait until the midterms, because clearly a midterm and two years is precisely the same thing as a presidential election, right? Clearly, there's no difference whatsoever in a Supreme Court justice stepping down nearly three years before the next presidential election, and another Supreme Court justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, choosing to step down from life merely weeks before the presidential election. These two instances are indisputable from each other, okay? The difference is negligible at best. Now, I'm not expecting you to wait until the midterms, because I think Mitch McConnell did the right thing. When you have the majority, you ram it through. Democrats have the ability to ram it through, they'll ram it through, okay? But just pointing out the wild inconsistency from the left right here, because left inconsistency here is truly amazing, right? Just a few months ago, this is not that long ago, end of 2020, Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies. We have about eight weeks until the election. And Democrats said, we must wait until the election so that the people can speak at who they want to fill Ruth Bader Ginsburg's seat. And McConnell's like, nope, we're doing it. And well, now Democrats, she was on the other foot. Democrats are doing the same thing because as always, when it comes to politics for Democrats, it's just a power game. There's no principle whatsoever, like none. Never mind the fact that they didn't benefit in that situation. After all, they didn't get what they wanted. Trump's pick, you know, the one who didn't know the First Amendment, was rammed through and put on the court just in time for the presidential election. But that doesn't matter, because the Democrats should have principle. They should say, you know what? We didn't want to ram through nominee in 2020, mere weeks before the election. We wanted to wait for people to decide. And Republicans didn't allow that to happen, even though they did allow that to happen when there was still a year left over in Obama's presidency. Not that that has any bearing in this case whatsoever. But you see, if you had any principle or consistency, you would say, hey, we should wait until the midterms before we nominate a pick. We should always wait until whenever the next election is before making a new nomination. Now, of course, that raises the obvious question, at what point after an election can you continue to make nominations, and what point does the new window of time to wait until the next election take place? It's sort of like that rule from the movie Gremlins about not feeding them after midnight, right? When can you begin to feed the Mogwai after midnight, and when do you say, okay, it's after midnight, but like, how many hours after midnight do we wait? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Finally, I just want to say something about this supposed first black woman nomination that Joe Biden is so excited about. 
talk about overt racism, right? What a difference does it make? What melanin is in someone's skin? I'm much more concerned with the gray matter between the ears. What do I care if the nominee looks like me? Hey, 108 of 115 death sentences in the past have been white men, and eight have been Jewish, but that doesn't matter. Maybe there hasn't been a black woman on the Supreme Court yet, but maybe that's just because they don't make as good justices. Did you ever think about that? Clearly, race and sex has never played any role in the selection and confirmation of justices in the past, so it shouldn't make any now. Okay, it's purely coincidence, purely coincidence at the white man to non-white slash non-man ratio being what it is, but to deliberately pick on the basis of race now is clearly overt racism, but it's only overt racism when it's not to nominate a white man, and that's just how that goes. Folks, we're in the battlefield for the soul of America. Collectively and figuratively speaking here, before the left mischaracterizes me, please sure to like us and subscribe to help us continue to wage the metaphorical war for the right to talk faster than anyone else, as we all know that speed and pervasiveness of the mouth proves who's right better than any barometer.